Okay, we will go ahead and begin. <clears throat> Just really quickly, board members, um, on your microphones, when you hit the speak button, it puts you in line. Uh, there's a it tallies up. You get in line as far as uh, your speaking opportunity. Um, just as a reminder, under Robert's rules, if you've already spoken and others haven't, so there may be occasion where you'll be, get called on out of line if, if other people haven't had the opportunity to speak. So just as a, a, a thought, um, when you push your speak button, your microphone is live. So if you, the whole time you're sitting there in your seat waiting, your microphone is on, you can hold down, you can push and hold down your mute button while you're sitting there, but it's just temporary. You have to hold it down right now. Some of that will be different next month, I believe, but just for today, that, those are kind of where you're at. So, if any questions. Okay, so thank you for being here. We will excuse Chair Huntsman uh, today and wish him a speedy recovery, and we will begin um, with the Pledge of Allegiance led by Board Member Terrell Warner. Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. <clears throat> Thank you. Board Member Linda Hansen has our board member message. You know, whenever I come to do this, well, whenever Terrell does a message, she always has these cute little PowerPoints. <laughs> And so I was going to do a cute PowerPoint too. And so I was, I was sitting there the last day of the session, listening to the session, and I was putting together my cute PowerPoint. And I was all of a sudden, um, the bill of bills came up, and and I saw all of the things that we had gotten that I thought were gone, were that were appropriated for, and I was so amazed, and I was just filled with overwhelming gratitude for our staff and for the, the great work they did. I know that I was, I was um, covering two bills and um, bless, I, they both had appropriations and bless Scott Jones's heart, a sweet guy. I mean, he t probably took 800 texts and messages from me saying, what is this about and how is this gonna work and all of that. And in the end, they were both funded and I appreciate so much their their hard work at the legislature. So um, I, I was trying to think of what I could do to thank them. So I made them chocolate chip cookies yesterday. I did the, I did the mom thing. So it's, the chocolate chip cookies are back at Sherry's desk. But I wonder if we could have everybody who helped at the legislature stand up so that we could thank you. So, uh, so everybody that, that was there and helped, all staff, if you'll stand up. Thank you so much, you were phenomenal. And the things that you did were for kids this year were incredible. Thank you so very much for all you've done. Thank you, Board Member Hansen. <clears> okay, <throat> we will have um, HR come and introduce our new employees. On? Oh, good. <laughs> All right, so we have a few new employees. I'll let them introduce themselves and where they work. I'm Scott Schomar. I work down in IT development. I'm Bronna Mackay. I work in IT development too on the Utrex team. I'm Chuma Uzo, uh, Assistant Director of IT. I'm Chanel Christensen, and I'm in the Child Nutrition Program. Good morning. My name is Quincy Roberts, and I work within the Community Equity and, and Counseling 
excuse me, prevention. I'm still trying to get this down. I've only been here for four days. <laughs> Hello, <laughs> I'm Crystal Carfaro and I'm in teaching and learning. Nice to meet you. Hello, I'm Kevin Newsom. I'm with uh, the Child Nutrition Program. Hello, my name is Barbara Fuentes and I'm with Communications and Administration. Welcome and thank you for being here with us. Hey, Acknowledgement of Student Artwork, uh, Kathy Jensen. Good morning. I'm happy to present the artwork today, uh, largely in this room coming from Lakeview Elementary School in the Provo School District with the BTS ALP art specialist, Alicia Gray. I attended an art night at this school in the fall and saw all of this amazing work. It had been a school-wide project on We Rise by Lifting Others. Each student in the school, and we have actually two of these panels with the wings, we just chose to hang one, but each student picked a color and did some Zentangle on their wing, and on the back they wrote a statement about what they could do as an individual to help others and to uh, lift others up. And you will see the statements are written over here, and of course there were a lot of duplicates, but the statements are here. Then at each grade level, each student did an art project that had something to do with flying, with wings, with birds, with insects or even with superheroes or fairies maybe so that it was an integrated project across the entire school then also on that night uh, they had the sarcophaguses out that were made in collaboration in the sixth grade uh, study in their study of egypt um, I want to just make a statement about where this artwork went after it, led, it left um, Lakeview. One of the four strands in our new visual arts standards is present. It's a, it's a standard that deals with curating, talking about how you would share your work with others. And James Reese, who is the art teacher at Provo High School, really took this to heart and felt like that was a missing link in what we have been teaching kids in visual arts classes. So he really has focused on the present to the point that he has secured a space in the Provo Town Mall um, that is open to the public, unsupervised, but student artwork is shown in this space in the mall and he's called it Art Cetera. So if you ever get in the Provo Town Mall, be sure to go by Art Cetera and see. He has some professional artists who are displaying. He has high school students. And this work was in that mall. I actually took it down, so I physically knew it was there. And, and I wanted to give uh, James credit for, for focusing on present. James' students will also be designing the um, Utah Easter egg that will be at the White House for the Easter egg roll uh, in April. In the back, you see the work of uh, the students of Jennifer Scheel, a BTS ALP specialist at Indian Hills. They are colonial houses. Don't hesitate to take the, the outside of the house off. They are hooked by magnets, and you can take a cute peek inside of what's inside. Thank you. Thank you very much. Hey, our education highlight uh, will have Robert Austin do that introduction, social studies specialist. Good morning, I'm Robert Austin, the K-12 Social Studies Specialist. Um, one of my favorite days of the year, every year, is the United States Senate Youth Competition when amazing student leaders from across the state come together and we put them through the ringer. We have them do extemporaneous speeches, we have them do uh, roundtable discussions. It's basically a mock state board meeting. Um, and 
to introduce our two delegates <coughs> who uh, represented Utah this year is a legislator, Representative Elizabeth Waite, who, uh, from District 31, who um, contacted me once she found out that one of the delegates was a constituent and really took the lead on honoring the delegates up during the previous legislative session. So since these young people are much more interesting than me, I'll turn the time over to Representative Waite. Good morning. Just so you know, have a little orientation. Um, the district I represent is the north area of West Valley City. And Kate, um, like Robert said, is one of the Senate youth uh, delegates this year. And she uh, is one of my constituents. So I'm really excited, not only because we have a state Senate delegate from a state youth Senate uh, delegate from West Valley, but a young woman. So big celebrations. Um, in 1962, four U.S. Senators uh, proposed Senate Resolution 324, and that created the U.S. Senate Youth Program. So I wanted to just briefly tell you about a little bit about that. Um, as presented in the Senate testimony, the impetus for the program is to increase young Americans' understanding of the interrelationships of the three branches of government to learn the caliber and responsibilities of federally elected and appointed officials, and to emphasize the vital importance of democratic decision making, not only for America, but for people around the world. So that's what got us started. Each year, the Hearst Foundations provide a $10,000 scholarship, as well as transportation to and expenses for a week-long experience in Washington, D.C., for two youth senators from each state. So our two are Kate and James. The uh, 2018 youth senators are Kate DeGroote from West Valley City, who, and she goes to Skyline High School, and James Madsen, who lives in Bountiful and attends Bountiful High School. Both serve in elected leadership positions in their schools or cities, and both are recognized for leading community service projects. Those are parts of the pieces of their background that qualify for them for this position. Kate and James have just returned from their week in Washington, and I think they're going to speak just briefly um, and share some highlights from their trip. So here are Kate DeGroote and James Matson. Hello, my name is Kate DeGroote, and I am a junior at Skyline High School. Um, I'll put those to the side. Okay, so this past week in Washington, D.C. was absolutely incredible, and I'll just go over a couple of the highlights that I experienced. So um, first, we got to hear from Congressman John Lewis on the anniversary of Selma, and that was easily one of the most impactful speeches or people that have ever I've ever heard from as he told us to fight for what we truly believe in and to keep going even when we have setbacks and even when others tell us that we can't do something. And I was also very inspired um, by the 103 other delegates to this program, um, one of them being James as I was able to hear about the community service they have done, their positions in their own communities, and what they're passionate about, as well as I was able to learn about all different sides of the political spectrum and their own reasons for believing such ideas. And it really expanded my mind and showed me just how many things I need to reevaluate about my own personal beliefs and how I need to, I guess, listen to others more and really try to find compromises. And I just have a couple of things that I brought with me. Okay. So first of all, um, at the end of the program on the last day, they gave us all an American flag um, that they had flown over the Capitol building. So we all now have a piece of the Capitol with us. And um, on Wednesday night of the program, we, that was what they called the Senate reception night. So I think this year they had 70-something um, senators come to that reception. So that was held in the um, Senate Hart Building, I believe. And so we each got a diploma of sorts, and our senators signed them. So this is 
uh, for us, we had Mike Lee come, Senator Mike Lee come and sign ours, and we got to just talk to him about politics, his own experiences, and what it's like to be a senator in Washington, D.C. Okay, James? Well, my experience was amazing. It was probably one of the most, you know, the things I'll look back on in my life as most influential in shaping not only what I believe, but what I want to do with my life. Um, each day was like one life changer after another. We got, because we got to meet people like Kate said, like Congressman John Lewis, who, you know, is only, is one of the 10 great civil rights leaders that's still alive. And, and hearing what he had to say was really, really made me wonder, you know, and made me think, well, I can do something like that when, when I get older. I can make a change in the world that's uh, uh, for the better. And it wasn't, you know, all, we met all these amazing people, and each of them taught us different amazing things, like Senator King and, and all sorts of, of knowledge that I, I know I can look back on. But the most, the, the part of the experience that was most significant to me personally was the exposure that I had to the wide variety and diversity of opinion, religion, and um, just because where I live, you know, the um, the diversity of opinion is less than other places. I don't, just to put it lightly, at least. There's most people tend to think along the same sort of lines. So I had never been exposed to an environment, especially an environment of leaders who all believed different things from all ends of the spectrum, whatever the issue was, whatever, you know, and, you know, even religion-wise, I'd never been exposed to that many type, different types of religion in one room. And so being able to learn from these people and why they believe what they believe helped me crystallize my own beliefs and really understand, um, the, you know, the other side of the, of the spectrum on some cases and, and made me realize that I have a lot more in common with, with um, the people of the United States, whatever their belief is, than I might have thought previously. It helped me learn, you know, one of the speakers that really had an impact on me was the executive editor of the Washington Post. And he, the Washington Post's motto is, on my jacket I actually have the pin that they gave us, it says, democracy dies in darkness. And that really hit me hard because I, you know, very few um, you know, there's a small population of America that actually votes and participates civically. So this, you know, I, I, I believe that I had a unique experience where I was able to understand things to a greater depth than most, you know, people are able to. So I came back from my trip and I really wanted kind of politically charged to make, uh, you know, to uh, advocate for civic education and for people understanding issues and not necessarily just picking a side and arguing, but really understanding each other and why you believe that. So um, when I got back, uh, I, you know, my mom had sent me an email over the trip about the school walkouts that were happening, happening yesterday on the 14th. And I, you know, I didn't know it was going to, I planned to participate in, in the walkouts later, but I didn't know that they were going to have one on the 14th. So I, tr uh, all, there was a lot of plans for kids to just walk out of school and they weren't really sure what they were going to do. So instead of having my school walk out, I tr organized it so that we would all uh, have like a, a kind of like a group discussion and memorial to the, to the Parkland kids. And I really felt like that discussion at my school, at least, it was kind of, a, it was very emotionally powerful and moving. And I really felt like it brought my school together and helped these, you know, helped the people of my school have an experience similar to I did, where they understood each other's beliefs and why they believed it. So this experience, of course, I'll look back at meeting these amazing people, and I'll be like, "That's a, you know, this is going to be, this is something that changed my life." But I think the part that influenced me most was meeting all those people. And not and their seeing their their accomplishments even at the age of 16, 17, 18, some of those kids had you know started like four charities or two of them had uh, their families had come over from Africa when they were eight or nine years old and it was just amazing to see the progress they made even in in the most um, in some of the hardest circumstances I've ever seen. So I'm just so grateful that I was able to go and experience this and I know that because of it. I'm going to try to do everything I can to make a difference in my community 
and in any uh, and in the communities around me. So, thank you. Thank you very much for coming today. Both of you spoke of inspirational things that you were able to be in contact with. And I think today we have been inspired by you and the things that you have shared. And so you have changed us and you have helped to inspire us. So thank you for your time. Thank you for your leadership and thank you for the opportunity to meet you today. Do we have any other questions from board members? Okay, board member Stokes. Will you just remind us the two schools again? I can't. Bountiful and Skyline. Bountiful and Skyline High School. Thank you very much for being here today, and thank you for your time. But I just have to reiterate. Do you mind? Sorry. Do you mind Skyline use? High School, but she lives in West Valley. Okay. West Valley is a beautiful place to live. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fantastic. Thank you very much. <clears throat> Mm-hmm.